Okay, so I want this to be a real quick how-to um, on the Maxima Live device I have made for Eddie Roll video mixes. Uh, here I'm going to show it with the V4EX, but um, as you can see over here, it works for the V8 and V4 models. Uh, link in bio to where you can get the free version for this and also the pro version. It's got a couple of extra features. So what's happening here is I've got the Eddie Roll V4EX. Uh, this camera is an input to the mixer. Um, the output from the mixer is going to my PC over here uh, to get captured. That's how you can see this. Um, and then I've got two forms of feedback here. I've got channel three, which is my analog feedback. So the preview output is being looped back in. And channel four, is the HDMI feedback. So the HDMI out of this mixer is being fed into input four. So that means we can have two different types of feedback here, which is pretty nice. So I'm using this cheap USB MIDI device here to connect my computer over here to the right running Ableton Live to the back of this V4 EX. And it's exactly the same way that you'd control the V4, V8, or V1 over in Ableton. You just have to drag in my Max for Live device. It might look a little different. If that's the case, it's probably because it's a newer one. Um, I'm updating these all the time as I think of new cool things to do. What you'll notice is, doo -doo -doo -doo, as I turn this knob, the A select knob, you'll see the input here is changing. Isn't that exciting? So this pretty much gives us control over all the controls on the face of this mixer. And once you've got it set up, so looking over here, this tells you how to set your uh, MIDI setup, which um, if you just hit menu, MIDI, you can scroll down and change the settings there. Like for example, transition select 11H, you just click on it change it to 11H, click it again, and you're done. So you will need to change uh, a few of these. Some of them will be set to these um, channels by default, the device into a MIDI channel here. Uh, and then you're going to need to select the MIDI USB output that I just showed you before. That gives us control of all of these fun functions. Wee wee. Okay, so because we're in Ableton, we can click up here on MIDI and this would give us the ability to map each of the controls from this mixer to another type of MIDI controller that you have that maybe you're using to control um, other audio stuff as well. Um, so you can do that to synchronize things like effects and faders and things like that across Ableton if you're using an external controller. Um, but one of the things that I like to do is, because we have a MIDI track here, we can simply, of course, automate it using our envelopes here. So first thing I want to do is grab the T-bar here. And because I've got my video from the camera here on B side of the bus, and I've got my feedback channel on A side of the bus. I can use an automation curve like this to make it so that at the end of each bar, the T-bar fades. So at the end of each bar, we start to get this nice kind of, let's make that even more abrupt. Yeah. So then at the end of each bar, we get the feedback start to roll and then it snaps back at the start of the new bar. So, Let's get input A, and I'm going to change up how it's how the inputs are running. So let's just unlink the loop. Let's make it two bars. And I want it kind of out of sync. I'm a big fan of um uneven bar lengths because 
that means that eventually we will get the different type of feedback when we roll around at the end of the bar. Yeah, there we go. Which I find very fun. Let's continue to mess around a bit. AFX2, great. So in that case, this is negative over here. Let's see what happens when we have some uneven bars where we change the negative controls. The level of the negative here. Fun. Um, and then on this, I've got shake. So I'm gonna grab AFX1. I'm gonna make the start of the bar shake. Fun. I'll maybe put a tiny bit of shake at the end of the bar. Yeah. Fun. Okay, so. Let's see what that's like with some music. Yeah, brilliant. So, you can see what we've got is beautifully synced to our music. And if I have a bit more movement, you'll see the synchronized effects are uh, pretty hot from just a single camera input here. Okay, so I haven't even talked about presets yet. So if you end up with a state that you like, kind of set up here, I think this is pretty cool. I can hit shift, click on the preset, in this case five, and now I've saved it. And if I change stuff, like let's just do something like this. If I click on five, I return to my previous state. So that's great because you can, uh -huh. because you can do some fun stuff with that. Uh, let's do something like this. Perfect. So that's pretty fun and gross. Hold shift, click. And now we've got that preset saved. So we can now jump between complex presets, which was something that you couldn't do on the original um, V4EX or any of the Eddie Roll mixes. Um, so this is like very, very useful, very powerful. You can build these cool states that you really like the look of and then just jump to them. So you can build these really cool states that you like the look of that are you know, quite complex and then jump between them. Unfortunately, we can't um, automate jumping between presets yet, but that is something that uh, I'm looking at hopefully adding in the future because it'd be nice to be able to set up some states and then, you know, be able to jump between them kind of on whim. Um, brilliant. So I hope this was like a good little introduction into what kind of stuff you can do with the Max for Live device here. Okay, so till next time, catch you later.